Hey guys, today we're going to talk about our Analyze Craft and Structure Worksheet. And we're going to work on questions numbers one through five. So if you haven't downloaded your copy, if you want to type on it, you're on page, slide eight of today's presentation for Thursday. You're going to click, ha uh, go and put it in present mode. You're going to click, click here to get a copy. Notice that when you do that, it says, would you like to make a copy of Gidry's Two Kinds Analyzed Craft and Structure? You hit make a copy. This means it's force copying it to you. Once it pops up, you're going to go up here and take out the word copy of Gidry, and you're going to change it to your first initial and last name. So since I am typing this, I would put J Gidry. Remember, if there's someone else with your first and last name, please make sure that you fit, put your full first name. Now, you could also choose to type here on the line. So I could put Jordan Gidry, and then I could put my date and my hours. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer these with you. So our first one's a compare and contrast and an analyze cause and effect. So this one's going to be a little bit more lengthy answer because it does have two questions. So the first one says compare and contrast. How are the mother and the daughter similar and different? So you have to think how are they alike and how are they different? So I'm going to start and I'm just going to highlight this and start typing. You can do however you want. I'm going to put um, the mother and daughter are similar. Uh, so the mother and daughter are similar because they are both strong willed. And strong willed means they don't like to give up easily. Um, how, then I have to say, okay, so I answer the first part. How are they similar and how are they different? Now, I would say the mother is more idealistic. Believing that all things are possible. On the other hand, now that is going to be something that indicates differences. So on the other hand, the daughter is more realistic, comma, believing that one must accept restrictions in real life. So the mother believes that the uh, anything is possible. She's very idealistic. So she thinks that she has that mentality that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Whereas the daughter does not. The daughter believes that you have limitations and you can only do what is capable of you within those limitations. So that's just our answer for our first question. Now we have our second question in there, which is how does the difference in their attitudes cause problems? So the difference in their attitudes causes problems because the daughter believes that she can never meet her mother's expectations and the mother is angry because the daughter refuses to try. Oops, period. All right, so that's your answer to your first question. Yes, some of these are going to be a little lengthy, but I promise, bear with me. All right, then we have our second question. So for our second question, and then again, I'm going to just go ahead and highlight and start typing. Our second question says, draw conclusions. In the story conflict or the struggle between the characters results when the mother pushes the daughter to succeed. Is there a winner in this conflict and explain? 
So we have to think. First thing, in the story conflict, it says there results in the mother pushes the daughter to succeed. Is there a winner? So this one's going to be more of your opinion. I'm going to give you some of what I feel. So I'm going to say... Um, The conflict results in a draw or, I'm going to say the conflict results, I'm going to change it. The conflict results in no one winning. Let me fix my grammar. Sorry, guys. So the conflict results in no one winning. So in my opinion, it's a kind of a draw between the mother and the daughter. They're both so stubborn and they are so, both just so headstrong that neither one of them is willing to give in to the other one. So they have this constant draw or like coming to an impasse where they just will not meet. Um, why do I think this way? So now I have to have my explanation. The mother never achieves the life she wants for her daughter and the daughter doesn't develop the self-esteem she might have had if she had followed her mother obediently. All right, so. So this is what I believe. And remember, your opinion might be different. You might feel that the daughter wins because maybe you think that the mom gives up in the end. You might feel like the mother wins because she keeps pushing the daughter and pushing the daughter. And she is eventually successful, just not the way the mother anticipates her success being. All right, our third question is to make a judgment. And in this one, it says, should the narrator's mother have Push the daughter as she did. Explain. Again, this one is somewhat your opinion or what you believe. I'm going to give you my opinion and you can use mine to format your own. Um, so, I do not believe that the mother should have pushed the narrator as hard as she did. Um, the mother pushed the daughter too hard. Then I have to explain my answer. Remember, we always have to explain our thinking. The mother's efforts backfired and her daughter... <sighs> Uh, believed that she mm, and words together she would never be good enough this caused the daughter to stop trying all right Question number four. So our next one. So in this one, it says, what can one generation learn from another? What have you learned about how people of different generations interact with readings from the story? Again, this one's going to be a little bit more lengthy because it does have multiple uh, questions. Now, in this one, also your opinion, but I can give you a little bit of insight. So what can one generation learn from another? So, I'm going to start out with, remember, a tax sentence. Um, in the short story, um, two kinds, Amy Tan illustrates that people 
of different generations can learn from the ways uh, ways that each other acts under pressure and tries to influence each other. All right, so in the short story to Con, Amy Tan illustrates that people of different generations can learn from the ways that each other acts under pressure and tries to influence each other. Now, your job is to then explain this. So if you believe that this is true, then explain it. If you have something different, then you're gonna put in a different answer. All right, now we're gonna look at question five. So I'm going to back up just a time. I'm going to move it on to the next one. All right, so question five. So we should have five, six, seven, eight, and nine left. So question number five says, reread paragraphs 24 through 28 of the text. What does the passage show about the difference between the mother's motives and the daughter's motives? So now we have to look at and determine the motives between both characters. If you don't know where to go, you go back to paragraph 24. Paragraph 24 is going to be on page 16. So we're looking back for 24 through 28, so pages 16 and 17. It says, I could see why my mother was fascinated by the music. It was being uh, pounded out by a little Chinese girl, about nine years old, with a Peter Pan haircut. The girl had the sauciness of a Shirley Temple, she was proudly modest like the proper Chinese child, and she also did the fancy sweep of a curtsy so that the fluffy skirt on her white dress cascaded slowly to the floor like the petals of a large carnation. In spite of these warning signs, I wasn't worried. Our family had no piano, and we could af couldn't afford to buy one, let alone the uh, reams of sheet music and piano lessons. So I could be generous in my comments when my mother badmouthed the little girl on TV. Play note right, but doesn't sound good. No singing sound, complained my mother. What are you picking on her for? I said carelessly. She's pretty good. Maybe she's not the best, but she's trying hard. I knew almost immediately that I would be sorry that I said that. Just like you, she said, not the best because you're not trying. She gave a little huff as she set, uh, she let go of the sound dial and sat down on the sofa. So we have to look at the conflict there and what's going on. So remember, we're trying to figure out what does this passage show about the difference between the mother's motives and her daughter's motives. So we have to think about how do we want this described. Now, we, the mother is trying to show her daughter this for what purpose? So that's where we're going to start out. Or that's what we're starting with. So I'm going to say the, the mother wants to inspire her daughter. So the mother wants to inspire her daughter to be the best while the daughter wants the mother to accept less from her. And so that would be my answer. So the passage shows, now we're going to have to go back and race, I didn't race on this one, my fault. So paragraphs 24 through 28 show that the mother wants to inspire her daughter to be her best while the daughter wants the mother to accept less from her. All right, then we have number six. Number six says, how do the different perspectives of the mother and daughter create challenges for each character? So for this one, we have to look at the challenges that are presented. 
The mother we know has high expectations for the daughter, and those inevitably lead to disappointment. The daughter's disappointment or constant failure leads to feelings of guilt and resentment. And so we have to be able to put that into writing. Um, so the different perspectives of the mother and daughter create challenges for each character. The perspective of the mother creates challenges for the daughter because she Constant, constantly feels like a disappointment which leads to her harboring feelings of guilt and resentment. So that's what we know about the, the perspective of the mother creates challenges for the daughter because she constantly feels like a disappointment, which leads to her harboring feelings of guilt and resentment. Then we have to talk about the mother's high expectations. So um, the mother's high expectations calls her to... Um, constantly be let down by her daughter, which leads to disappointment. All right, and so that's question number six. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and all right, go ahead and look at number seven. From which point of view is the story told and what details in the text help you identify that? So remember, this one's two parts as well, so it's gonna be a little bit longer. So, Two Kinds by Amy Tan is told from a first person point of view. The daughter is the narrator of the story and uses first person pronouns such as I, me, and my. The daughter is describing her own story using her thoughts and feelings about the events that are occurring. All right, two questions left, guys. All right, question number eight. How, uh, it says how, oop, how much the story, this should be might, see, typo. How might the story be different if it were told from the mother's point of view? So in this one, how would the story be different if it was told from the mother's point of view? So remember, it's told from the daughter's point of view. The daughter is the narrator. So we know her thoughts and her feelings and her perception, but we don't know how the mother feels. So if you think about it, if two kinds was told from the mother's point of view, the story would focus on the mother's thoughts and feelings as each event occurred. We would have more insight 
into why the mother behaves as she does and only see what the what the daughter is doing. All right, so there we go. Now, next section we have, ooh, sorry guys, is we here we're gonna start with our diagram. So in our diagram, we have to describe the daughter. And so I might say that the daughter is insecure. Okay, well, here we go. So I might say that the daughter is insecure. So I'm gonna put I-N-S-E-C-U-R-E. Did that work? Let's move this up. So I said that the daughter is insecure. That's my first word. My next word that I'm going to think about, you know what, I'm just gonna insert a text box. Insert, where's my text box? Well, that's not working. So I'll tell you guys what to put. Um, let me see, control copy. paste. Here we go. My next one I have insecure. I'm going to take this insecure. I'm going to edit it. And instead of putting the word insecure, I'm going to use the word rebellious because I also feel that the daughter is a little bit rebellious. Now I'm giving you two words, insecure and rebellious. I have four more boxes for you guys. I want you to try and create four more words that you feel describe the daughter. So maybe you think that she could be, you know, insecure, rebellious, arrogant, undisciplined, any of that would work. I hope this helps and let me, got, let me know if you have any more questions. Thanks guys.